arts it's already like that part of the fitness aspect was already fulfilled so when it came to the martial arts I, I, I was able to pick up very quick but the thing about it was I was learning a traditional martial art called Choi Le Fat Kung Fu and Choi Le Fat Kung Fu is you know it's a very popular martial art in China you know but the thing is it's, it's, it is traditional and there are a lot of techniques that wouldn't really be too practical as far as like modern day hand-to-hand hand -hand combat is concerned but nonetheless it did get me a good foundation of the understanding of the martial arts um, due to some some personal issues with my mother and my, my instructor I ended up having to leave that school and you know end up training on my own so what ended up happening was that at that time at, at the age of 18 was when I went to start to go to college so I decided to go to college at Purdue University so I went to, to college at Purdue University and after that time during that time I had two years of martial arts training you know with Sam Ng and Philip Ng alright so I had a trolley foot training so when I went to college I didn't really know what I was going to major in and I just asked my sister you know what, what she suggested and she said major in management because you know you can go many places with that so I was figured all right whatever I just major in management but I didn't really go into college knowing what I wanted to do I mainly just went to college just to make my parents happy that I was going to college you know that was the main thing so I just went to college not even knowing what I wanted to do so I went to college, the only thing that I liked to do, that I knew I liked to do, was martial arts. And so I was caught in between, you know, I already practiced martial arts for two years. And when I went to college, there wasn't any other art that I wanted to pick up. But at the same time, I wasn't, I wasn't experienced enough in order to teach Chorley Fuck Kung Fu, nor what I, was I given even permission to teach. And plus my relationship with my or the instructor was already destroyed. So I was kind of on my own. And the only thing, you know, I started coming up with was what to do. And I noticed that there must be other people in my position as far as martial arts is concerned. Because once you practice martial arts and then you go to college, typically you're going to have to leave your school in order to go to college and now you're on your own. So I figured a good idea would, to, would be to create an organization where I could um, bring everybody together that had prior martial arts experience and basically share each other's knowledge and wisdom in the martial arts in order to help each other grow and take each other to another level. So in the year 2001 was when I, f when I founded the organization called Fighters United. And Fighters United was basically what I just explained is integrating all martial artists from any style into this organization so they can learn and feed off of each other. But the unique thing about this organization was that it was meant for people that really wanted to build close connections and friendships with people in the organization. It was not meant for just people to just come in and spar against each other or just fight against each other. That's not what it was meant for. So what we ended up doing was we ended up having an interview process for people to get into the club. They had to be interviewed and then they had to go through like a three month evaluation period in order to be accepted into the club. So it was pretty strict and there were people who tried to join just to fight but we denied them access. Um, and the, the club worked out really well. I met some great martial artists and some great friends in that club and they that club was what shaped me as a martial artist you know for my entire life it, it taught me to liberate myself from free myself from being just practicing one thing I went into college thinking that oh only hand techniques are effective and that's all you need to know but then I started training with some really good Taekwondo people and some really good kickboxers and they really showed me how important kicks are and how effective they can be. 
and then I went into thinking, oh, only stand-up fighting is needed. You don't really need to know much ground fight. Then I ran into some really good Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighters and some really good wrestlers. And I, and I sparred with them and everything. And they showed me the effectiveness of working on the ground. So I learned to integrate all three of them. You know, the punches, kicks, and ground fighting. And, and basically really develop myself as a martial artist and just basically being exposed to so many different arts and so many different ways of training, you know, it really shaped me to be, you know, develop, end up developing my own way of um, combat. So, you know, I, I was in that club, you know, I, I was the founder of the club, president, whatever, and I went to Purdue for a period of four years and then the whole time I was there, my main concentration was that club. That was my main motivation to be in school. And the only thing that I really cared about was was that club. So even though I might have been technically majored in management, my major to me was martial arts. You know, and that's what I lived for. I mean, that's all I cared about. Um, there's really nothing more important to me than martial arts. The only thing that that wasn't, that I really wanted inside, you know, that would, that I would care for more than martial arts was, was love, you know, from a woman. And that was in itself very difficult to find. Um, basically finding someone that would be true to you and that would love you and then, and then, you know, you feel the same for the other person. I went through a lot of relationships, things didn't work out and my natural draw was just to just live my life for the martial arts. Um, so that's how it, it went. I trained extremely hard. I mean, to the point where I'd be training two, three hours a day, almost almost every single day. Um, and then in 2003 was when I met, you know, my future wife, you know, Jenny. You know, I met her and then you know, my, you know, things started changing. I started to be more understanding of people that are in relationships. Because when I was training martial arts, I didn't understand how people could, you know, choose a relationship over martial arts. Like, I just didn't understand that. You know, people, people would be coming into the training session and they'd be like, they'd come in every now and then, sometimes they skip, sometimes they come late. And usually the people that ended up being in relationships, they ended up just quitting altogether. And I never understood that. I'm like, how could you, you know, just let it go like that? But, you know, when I got into the relationship and we were in love and everything, I really started to understand more about why people were like that. And what I started to realize was that, to me, the most important thing in life at that time, you know, through the experience was not martial arts anymore. It was just love, you know, just going beyond the martial arts into something even more deep and more profound, which was love. And, you know, before, like, all I wanted to do was train. But then when I was with the woman that I loved, all I wanted to do was spend time with her. So it wasn't even about martial arts anymore. And I just wanted to spend time with, with my woman and just be with her. And so that that was a, 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 a really a big turning point in my life. You know, but let me backtrack again. Before that, my greatest turning point. So I started practicing martial arts. You know, 1998, 2000, I went to college. All right. In the year 2002, I went through a spiritual transformation. And what ended up happening was I came back from college one of these summers and during that whole summer I went to the bookstore at Barnes & Noble and I started picking up martial arts books, you know, to just expose myself to something beyond the physical. So I went to Barnes & Noble, I picked up some books on Bruce Lee and the first book that I read I think it was The Artist of Life by Bruce Lee. 